Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast which is a live Bible question and answer program, where you, the radio listeners, at any point in time during this broadcast, you may pick up your phones, dial the number 281-837-2222 with any Bible questions uh, you'd like to ask, and your comments uh, will be heard as well. Uh, go ahead and turn to the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk, and I'm going to read as quickly as I can into your hearing, verses number 1 through verse number 12, as we're going to do a part 2 of our subject matter from last week, for I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. For I will work a work in your days that you will not believe, though it be though it be told you. Uh, uh, okay, at this time, uh, let me go ahead and read this into your hearing. The Bible says, the burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou will not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou will not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are they that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law, Habakkuk said, is slack, and judgment ne ne never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceeded. Behold you among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. Here's our subject matter, Habakkuk 1.5. For I will work a work in your days, which, will not, which you will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards, and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come forth from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasted to eat. They shall come up, or come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be scorned unto them. They shall derid every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and defend, imputing this his power unto his God. Are thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die, O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment. And O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. I'm ready to hear hearing Habakkuk chapter 1, verses number 1 through verse number 12. This time, uh, we'll take the callers, 281-837-2222. Go ahead, call you on the air. I just want to commend you guys for the program. Thank you, sir. And for taking calls. Yes, sir. I think I've seen one of your sister uh, programs, and they said the comments were disabled. So I think it's a great thing you guys are doing. Thank you. Uh, so you were talking about uh, eating pork and stuff. Is it what you discussed today? Talking about what? Say it again. Eating pork. Eating pork. Eating pork. Eating okay. Pork. Okay. What is your question on that? You were saying, you know, you were quoting Romans and saying that it, it was okay, that uh, okay. what you eat has nothing to do with spirituality. It's oh, okay to eat pork. You're asking, is it okay for us to eat pork today? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying that was the statement you were making that you were quoting Romans uh, and saying that Paul was saying it, it sounded like you were opposed to people saying that eating pork was wrong. Okay. Right so far. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, are you saying that anything that anybody, I mean, people are supposed to eat everything? Yes. What, we're, what, what the Bible advocates for New Testament Christians is that we have the liberty uh, to eat anything that we desire because it's not what goes into a man, even under the Old Testament. It wasn't what really went into them that made them unclean, but it's what comes out of an individual that makes them. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not what goes into them as far as food is concerned, but it's what comes out of an individual's heart is what made them unclean. Yeah, two points. I think the first point is... Uh, Naturally, uh, you don't have the liberty to eat everything because you know some foods you eat and it's even poison and all that. Okay, do you have a scripture that says that? Because the world in such a way that even though we eat, we so, don't have uh, the freedom to eat everything. Everything was created for a purpose. Sir. And two, uh, okay. like uh, in Deuteronomy and Leviticus, the Israelites were given what they were supposed to eat. And since you quoted Romans, how do you explain the same Paul who wrote in 1 Corinthians 10 1, 
say that whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Okay, so sir, I want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. Sir, 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 I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So are you saying that today it is wrong to eat pork? Is that what you yeah, said? It is. It is. Yeah. Okay, now, let me ask you, sir, sir, hold on, sir. Let me ask you a question then. Are we under the Levitical priesthood today? Because what you read from the book of Levi, uh, the Old Testament, let me ask you something. Are we still under that priesthood today? It says the Levitical sense is difficult for you. How do you explain the first question? Sir, no, that's a yes or no, sir. Are we under the Levitical priesthood today? No, we are not under the Levitical Okay, priesthood. and so when you read from the... Levitical food has nothing to do with the Levitical priesthood. Okay, you say that, but there's no scripture. Let, let's read. Let's just You hadn't read a scripture yet. First of all, I want to establish, and you can stay on the line, I want to establish something, first of all. That what he has read, Radio Listen, see, this is what we're talking about rightly dividing the Word of God. What he's read is he's read a, a statue, an ordinance, a commandment that was given under the old law. And what we want to deal with and we want to ask ourselves, is that something that Jesus in his sacrifice on the cross, was that something that was nailed to the cross? Now, first of all, let's establish the priesthood of change. In Hebrews chapter 7, we're going to do some reading. In verse number 11, this is New Testament. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Hebrew writes, if therefore perfection... Well, by the, Levit the Levitical priesthood, which is what he just read from. He said, for under it the people received the law. He said, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Look at verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 7. For the priesthood being changed. You see that? Being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. Now, now I want to establish, first of all, understand something, that Jesus is a priest today, and he was not from the tribe of Levi. He was from the tribe of Judah. Now, but let's deal with the specific issue of, of the eating of meats. Now, Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 4, and again, he's writing to Christians. I want you to get this. He's writing to Christians. He says, Now the Spirit speak expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith. No, what are they, how are they going to depart from faith? Because they're going to give heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Now, in my Bible, there's a colon before he gets to verse 2. What is he going to, what is a doctrine of devil? Notice what they're going to be doing. They're going to be speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Notice what they're going to do. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat. That's what this guy just said. And it's a doctrine of the devil. Abstain from meat which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. Get this. Now, he said it's not, but God says it is. Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. And here's the idea, sir. If to you eating pork is wrong, if to you and your heart it's sin, then, and you eat it, then it would be sin to you. But you cannot bind eating meat on anybody today and saying if you eat a piece of pork, if you eat a pork chop, if you eat oxtails, that you are on your way to hell. Because you have to understand something. God, through the blood of his son Jesus Christ, has now given us freedom, liberties, to eat anything that we so choose to eat. You have no right to judge anybody in that area. Now, I want you to look at what Paul says again in Colossians. I want you to go to chapter number 2. See, now, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2. Paul, again, is writing to Christians. Notice what he says in verse number 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He says, now look what he says in verse 16, and this is what you're trying to do, sir. He says in verse 16 of Colossians 2, Let no man therefore judge you in what? In meat or in drink. He ain't talking about alcohol. Under the Old Testament, they had meat, as you read from Leviticus. They did have certain meats that they could and could eat. They had certain drink offerings that they had to perform. He ain't talking about alcohol here. He's talking about under the Old Testament, there were certain drink offerings that they had to abide by. He said, don't let nobody judge you in that in drink or respect of a holy dough, like the Sabbath day, sir. Do you keep the Sabbath? Which was a Saturday. He said, don't let nobody judge you in that. Or in the new moon or in the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body, he says, is of Christ. Amen. Sir, you cannot judge people about something physically that they eat and say that they cannot make it to heaven if they eat pork. Uh, the Colossians 2. 
Sir, what faith are you? Sir, sir, what religion are you? What faith are you? I'm a Seventh Day Adventist. Ah. Okay. See, all right. Okay, so, sir, let me ask, hold on. Stay on the line. Now, now, let's stay on the stay on the line because I know you. Uh, you stay on the line. So you don't forget that collusion. Uh, sir. Collusion to How many uh, Bible uh, uh, what do you call it? interpretations have you read it? In? Say that again, sir. Version. What, what version did you just read? I just read the King James version. Okay. But I can read your Bible and still get, come up with God's answer. Here, here's, here's the idea, sir. You, you, no, no. Here's your, no, sir. This, we pay, uh, sir. Oh, sir. Okay. Cut. Hold on, hold on, sir. Oh, so, so, sir, now the problem's with the Bible. When you just read Leviticus 1, you had no problem with the King James Bible. Now, all of a sudden, we've read the King James and you disagree with what's been said. Now, there's a problem with the King James Bible. I'm quoting the fact that I'm asking you. It's a question. What's the question, you know, sir? Some Bibles put Sabbath, and some put Sabbath for Do you know that? Uh, what difference does that make, sir? Sir, let me ask you a question. Are Are you holding on to the Sabbath day? That's what I'm going to ask you. Oh, yeah. I observe the okay. So, okay. So, let me ask you something, sir. Now, now, sir, let me ask you something. Now, on the Sabbath day, what was the penalty if somebody did any work on the Sabbath day? Oh, yeah. There were a lot of penalties. Told, I didn't hear you. What what's the, what was the penalty for working on the Sabbath day under the law? Okay, so let me ask you something. Okay. When you see somebody working on the Sabbath, do you stone them to death? Huh. No. Why? Because I observe it the way Christ observed it. Look for Sir, you're missing the whole point. See, the point is, see, this is and this is what you guys do in the seven day Adventist. Let me tell you what you just did. You claim to hold on the law. But you don't claim to hold on to the penalty when uh, the law is violated. And so what you do is, you say you hold on to the law, but when it comes to the penalty of the law, what y'all do is you then want to run to Christ. You want to run to Christ, but you want to have Christ when you want to have Christ. I didn't finish one line. Please let me finish. You asked uh, why we don't stone people, and I'm saying we observe the Sabbath the way Christ observed. If you remember Sir, no you don't. Sir, let me ask you something. No, I'm not going to let you spit out too much fooling. Let me ask you something. They, no, no, I'm not going to let We pay for the program. So let me say something to you. Now, the way Christ observed the Sabbath is, let me tell you something. On the day of Pentecost, they went to Jerusalem. All right, cut him off. Cut him off. Cut him off. That's enough. I can't. We, can, we, we got, we, uh, saints have paid for the time. Let me say this, radio listeners. Now, you just heard a display of, of, of hypocrisy and foolishness uh, from an individual uh, who don't have the spirit of God. Now, he claims to hold on uh, to the law, the old law. But I ask him, what about the penalty for violating the law? And then all of a sudden now, he does, he claims he does what Jesus did. Now, I want to make sure you understand something. This is how you rightly divide the word. Jesus did keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Jesus held on to the Sabbath. And he did, and he's the only one who kept the Sabbath, the law of Moses, perfectly so that he could die for our sins. Now, what you have to understand is the New Testament didn't come into effect until after Jesus died. Jesus lived under the old law. He held on to the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. And in Jesus holding on to the law, like these so-called seven-day Adventists claim they do, you had to get this. You had to go to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. radio listeners. There was no, well, we live in Baytown, we can't get, no. You find a way to get there if we're under the law. If you were under the law, you must have found a way to get to Jerusalem to worship God. And that's why when you look at Acts chapter 2, every nation on the earth kept a Sabbath day, which was called Pente a Pentecost, a day which was on a Sunday. Every nation on earth, under heaven, was there on that day. No excuses. They should have been there on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is you got these guys, these seven-day Adventists, who are fictitiously deceiving themselves and believing that they're holding on to the Sabbath. But again, when it comes to the violation of the Sabbath, the penalties for violating the Sabbath, holding on to the old law, now all of a sudden, they want to run to Jesus. Mm. And what we're teaching and telling you is, today, Jesus has all power, all authority. The priesthood has been changed. That's why Paul can write, don't let no man judge you in meats and drinks and of a holy day. Now, he's got to ask himself a question. Who is lying, either him or Paul? Somebody's lying because Paul has just said something different than what this seven-day Adventist has just said. And I'm telling you, I'm running with Paul and what the Holy Spirit allowed him Amen. to write 
on the pages of inspiration and not what some man is wrote. Go ahead, Carla, you're on the air. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Thank you so much for taking my call. Yes, ma'am. I really ma admire you guys. And uh, my comment and my question is concerning baptism. So um, when I was uh, young up through my childhood at 15 years, I had heard and received and believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that was through the upbringing of my mother. Um, Proverbs 22, 6 tells us, to raise our children up in the way they're to go, and when they're older, they won't depart from it. So when I was 39, through God's grace and mercy, even though I should be dead and in hell right now, he allowed me to uh, turn my will and care over to him. I repented of my transgressions. I confessed that he was my Lord and my Savior and repented and turned away from my sins. And he told me, or he led me, well, he impressed on my heart very uh, shortly after that that I would go and I would be baptized. And this was really before I even understood the significance of baptism. I didn't know that until I started um, hearing the teachings of you brothers. And so yes, my question is, does God know in the heart of the person going to be baptized and also the heart and the righteousness of the person being baptized? The church that I was baptized in was a non-denominational non -denominational church, and it still is. I'm no longer with that church, but yes, my question is, does the scripture say that my baptism was of no effect um, when, unfortunately, there's there's wolves and sheep clothing everywhere, was right. it of no effect because I was not baptized in a church of Christ? Amen. Okay, ma'am. And we'll let the Bible answer. Appreciate your sincerity. And before you hang up, I would like to... Uh, uh, to give you a uh, number uh, so that you could call us and and uh, we can follow up with you if you are um, if you have a pen and paper go ahead and write this number down 281 785 7583 281 785 7583 now to answer your question Paul is very clear in Ephesians 4 4 there is one Lord one faith and one baptism I'm gonna say that again Ephesians 4 4 there is one Lord one faith and one baptism. I want to make sure the radio listeners understand something. When an individual gets into the water, the water itself does not save. Amen. Jesus, who is alive, seated at the right hand of God, what he does is he baptizes individuals with the Holy Spirit in the water. Now, the problem with what you have just stated, ma'am, is first and foremost is that you were taught wrong. And you mm -hmm. cannot be taught wrong and baptized right. I'm going to make sure you understand that. Uh, the non-denominational churches, although they place folk in water, uh, and, and there's many uh, buildings where that have baptistries and people who perform acts of baptism, but an individual must understand before he or she gets into the water that they are not Christians before they have gotten into the water. You've got to make sure you understand that. Christians don't get baptized. I'm going to say that again. Christians don't get baptized. Sinners get baptized in order to become a Christian. It's in the water. Jesus then resuscitates a dead soul by giving him or her the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 19, verse 1, it came to pass that while Apollos at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, he came to Ephesus and he found certain disciples. He said unto them, have, Acts 19 and 2, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said unto them, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, unto what then, get what he asked them, have you been baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Now I want you to know John's baptism at the time they got baptized was a baptism that came from God. But it is now a baptism that is out of business. Why? Because now Jesus has died, been buried, and rose from the grave. And it wasn't until after Jesus rose from the grave and he was about to ascend into heaven that he he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes, that's the faith, and is baptized shall be saved. Radio listeners, you need to understand something. Jesus' commission to go out and get baptized wasn't until he was about to step on a cloud and ascend into the heaven to sit down at the right hand of God. Acts 19, Jesus is at the right hand of God. These people had received John's baptism, but guess what? They're going to have to get into the water again. Why? Because John's baptism could not give them the Holy Spirit. They had not been baptized by Jesus with the Holy Spirit. So that's why Paul asked, under what baptism? They said John's baptism. In Acts 19 and 4, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. That's who we're preaching today, Christ Jesus. Now notice what they did when they heard this. When they heard this, they said, no, we already been baptized before. That's not what they said. Said, I'm not doing it again. That's not what they said. They said they were baptized 
in the name, by the authority of the Lord Jesus. Ma'am, you cannot have been saved. Let me make sure we understand this. In a denominational church. One, first of all, they don't have the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. we, people get mad and upset about that. But it doesn't matter how mad or upset folk get when we tell them there's only... One people that God has. He only has one church. It didn't matter in the Old Testament days when people got mad. There were several other temples that were built by men other than the temple that was in the mountain where God commanded his people to worship. It didn't matter how mad everybody else got. God's spirit, his presence, only dwelt in that temple that was built by the requirements that Solomon got from God in the Old Testament scriptures. Yeah. And so there are not various churches out there that belong to God just because they dip people in water and just because they read from the Bible. And so what you have to do, ma'am, is you have to find a church of Christ where God's spirit is and allow a male member of the church to place your lifeless soul in the water so that Jesus can baptize you with his spirit and get this and add you to his people, his church that you read about in the Bible. See, man, when you got baptized where you were, you were added to that group of people. And that is a group of people that didn't have the spirit, don't have the spirit, and God is not with them. But, man, if you understand what we're propagating to you by reading the scriptures this afternoon, if you get baptized like they did on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says in Acts 2.47, pray. Praising God. They got baptized. Praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. Not the church because he only has one people. One body. The church is not a building. Not saying you got to be where we are. But you got to be somewhere where the doctrine of Jesus, where the spirit of God is. The one people daily such as should be saved. And so, ma'am, to answer your question with all sincerity, right now you're not saved. But you know what? God, knowing your heart has provided you an opportunity to still be in the land of the living, to call into this radio program, and to have these scriptures that you're, you're hearing today, to jot them down and study. Don't just take our word for it. Be like they were in Acts 17, 11. Study your Bible. Rightly divide it and do what God has said to do. And so, ma'am, we beg you to find a church of Christ and get your soul saved. And this is the providence that God has provided for you. Yes, ma'am. And this is my number. It's yes, ma'am. It's two eight one seven eight five seven five eight three. Two eight one seven eight five seven five eight three. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And you know, denominations or non-denominations, those who say they are, uh, they will agree with a lot of part of the scriptures that there's Christ. He came, he is the son of God, he was born of a virgin, but they will not agree with the one body part of the New Testament where it talks about the one body and which that one body is. Now, they, don't, they won't agree with that, but they will agree with the other parts. But that one part is what Philip talked about in Acts chapter 8 where he taught Jesus and the kingdom. In Romans chapter 8, uh, looking at verse 9, he says, But ye are not in the flesh. But in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. He says, now, you can write this down to Romans 8, 9. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So the Bible, says, the Bible is teaching us that if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you are none of his or you don't belong to him. And there are a lot of people that don't have the Spirit of Christ that are reading the Bible and are putting people in water baptism but guess what Christ is not with them so if Christ is not with them Christ is not will not be with you and all you did was get with I think Amen. we have a caller on yes, the line so we'll at this call time. 281 go ahead call you're on the air okay so go ahead Claire. you're on you're on the air hey brother green how you doing brother green all right I just want to address that first caller and you know when you asked him that question brother Stevenson about uh, serving a Sabbath day and what he needs to do is go back and find out that the Sabbath day has been done away with. And what I would suggest to him is he, if he reads Amos chapter 8, mm -hmm. verses 5 through 9, to find out that it says that the Sabbath day is going to be done away with. And mm -hmm. then he can read Mark chapter 15, verse 3, verse 3 to find out that it did actually happen. So why he was seven day business and one of the third the Sabbath day, he's observing something that's been done away with. And I'm going to hang up, but continue to listen. Hey.
Amen. God bless you, Brother Green, for uh, giving us more scriptures. Uh, hopefully this individual will take them and read them and study them and and, uh, and uh, work out his soul salvation. We have another caller on the line. Uh, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Can you all talk about gluttony and how gluttony is a sin? Because I know you're all saying that you can eat anything, but I wanted you to specifically talk about um gluttony so people can understand that even though we can eat anything but i want it explained how gluttony is a sin you're talking about over indulging in food is that what you're talking about ma'am yes sir matthew eleven nineteen. the son of man came eating and drinking and they say behold a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners but wisdom is justified of her children. I'm going to read it again in Luke 7 and 34. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous, that word gluttonous, uh, phagos, gluttonous, glutton, G5, 53, 15, a glutton. Uh, he says, A gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans uh, and sinner. You know, I've heard people say that uh, numerous times. Let me see. I'm going to look at the proverb. Proverb says, For the drunkard, and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. You know, this idea of overindulgence, you know, you know, the thing we ought to be concerned about when talking about overindulgence, uh, it, it, it ought to be about sin. Uh, I think the idea we need to be concerned about is the idea of being glutton as it relates to, to sin and overindulging in things, covetousness, that, that's not of God. But Brother, brother Ozan, you had something Amen. you want to add to that? Brother yes, Arnie. great yeah. job, Henry. Uh, the, the, the word deals with exactly where Henry went to the Old Testament. And one of the meanings, uh, and I'll give you this particular uh, word uh, from the book of uh, Proverbs, mm -hmm. is this word is H, like horse, 2151, 2151. And where the eating part comes in is riotous eaters. Yeah. So when you, if you're going to eat, and this is like people who party, banqueting while they drink, drinking games and eating, uh, so they're just eating. Uh, you don't have to throw up or anything, but it's just a riotous eater. Uh, one who's eating and banqueting and drinking, and, and but you're, you're riotous. Uh, it's like a, a, a crazy party. And... Uh, Run around with food and, and, and you're just overindulging. Uh, that's one of the areas when you bring in the food part. But if a person overeats, you know, an individual ate a little too much or something, yeah, it, it's a little bit more steep than that when they accuse yeah. Jesus of it. It's because it was a part of that people weren't controlling anything. He's going to eat all night, we're going to drink all night, what have you. So, as Henry said, it's, it's, it's where there's no bridle, there's no uh, holding back. We're just going to let loose, let go, you know. Unbridled, and and so that's what it's dealing with. It just doesn't talk so much about oh, I ate too much, and I'm so full. You know that that isn't it. So it, it goes with a party atmosphere as well. Uh, people who used to do robberies and and, and pillaging uh, villages, and even today men do it. Militaries will go through different cities, uh, and they will shoot up. They will go in and eat food and rape women and drink and do all manner of things. So we have to understand it's a little bit deeper than just eating uh, too many french fries or something like that. So we want to uh, leave the faithful saints of God with Romans 16 saying the Church of Christ salute you. A great point yeah. about gluttony. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when you remember when in, in Exodus, I think it's chapter 16, when God told them to go gather uh, the wafers yeah. uh, on the Sabbath day, and you had some that gathered more yeah. uh, than yeah. what they should have gathered. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so and that's gluttony. It's spoiled. Right. It's not over till the morning. Yeah. Right. And so and that, spoiled, that, yeah, yeah. that's riotous. That's uh, riotous gluttony. You know, yeah. trying to load up. Roll, yeah. Let's, yeah. Hey, let's get us what we can, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, and, and in the process, they're violating what God has said. And so yeah. it had more or less to do with their soul. Yes. Their spirit than it, you know, than it was, you know, the action. Yeah. So you gotta understand so our actions represent what's in our heart, yes. brother. And so they were just defiant, man. They yes. just wanted to, hey, hey, that's out there, man. Let's get as much as we can eat more, you know, that's right. good enough for the day, tomorrow, and, and next yeah. week. Yeah. You know, and, and that's gluttony, you know, yeah. we're gonna eat till we full, brother. Right, and, right. And uh, disregard God's laws. You know, yes. we're gonna do what we wanna do. And yes, because some people can eat more. One guy may eat four pork chops and you may say he's a glove. Uh -huh. No, he's not. You right. ate one. Okay, well, that's all you can hold. 
Right. It may be burn more cars, it may be bigger than you. So, you know, people try to use that, you know, and that, that's not what it means that he said. It's more or less dealing with, I have no limits, you know. I have no limits. I'm going to do what I want. We're going to party. We're going to be loud. We're gonna, see, because they're saying riotous eaters. Right. See, and that's, that's the idea. Because this word is used uh, and it's found in other scriptures uh, where it doesn't say the actual word of uh, glutton. Okay. You know, it deals with like the word, uh, for instance, Jeremiah 15, 19. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah 15, 19, if thou return, then I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me, and thou shalt take forth the precious from the vile. See, that's the same word. 215, well, the vile are those who do that. I mean, I just, I don't have a limit, man. You know, that's what I'm going to do. Right. I'm going to take it whether I need it or not. Right. Because I have no limit. Yeah. I do what I want. Right. I'm doing me, like people say, yeah. you know. And see, that's a part of gluttony, you know. Covers whether you got food there, whether yeah. it's, uh, even when the kings had the women. Instead of being happy with one woman, he got hundreds of women, you yeah. know. One at a time, you know. I mean, it's the way life is, and so because a lot of people don't realize righteous kings did not be with more than one woman at a time. That's right. David had a lot of women, and so did so Solomon, Solomon, but he had only one at a time. Yeah. And see, now the vile, more vile, they did things that were ungodly, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. partnerships and things. But mm -hmm. that, people got to do a little bit more study into the word. But yeah, it isn't just about a meal to me. Oh, I got to unbutton my belt, you know, I'm kind of stuffed, you know, that yeah. isn't, that isn't the right. term. Yeah, and that's what they weren't accusing Jesus. They were accusing Jesus of being unbright. He has no control. He would sell his publicans, they drank it, right. they called him a wine bill, but he never yeah. said he drank wine. Right. No one can say he ever drank wine. He turned water to wine. Yeah. He never said he drank wine, but they just assumed he was out eating was and there. drinking. What's in my cup, though? I might be eating at TGI Friday. I might have nothing but, but water in the cup. Right. I said, well, he saw that he's eating and drinking with people, man. He's a he's a wine bib and a glutton, which is ridiculous. And so that's false accusation. Now we can have that, you know. Great job, brothers. God Great bless job. you. Excellent work. Point blank quick. And that's it, you know, though a man tell you, that's still part of the same thing. You won't believe it, though a man tell you. I see that lady that calls, she believes it. Mm -hmm. Because of, and, but there's some who hear that same thing. And they won't believe it. Even though a man told them, the Lord told them, their horses are fast like lepers. He wasn't exactly to see, they don't, people didn't realize, Israel didn't realize you got nations that have horses a different breed than y'all used to. And they're swifter. And they're going to be riding those horses to get you, to chase you down, and they're going to kill you. Because he said they're a bill of nation. They're mm -hmm. hasty. But what he said, the key was he's going to say, my God gave me strength to do that. And the Lord said, that's where he's going to cross over. So then I'm going to come at him. Because right. he should have said, your God has sent me. See, that's right. what, remember, Pharaoh Nietzsche told Josiah, your God has sent me to do this. Your God says he didn't give no he God. Got in yeah, 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 he so got, he got in that battle. Yeah, he got in that battle, huh? But he's telling Israel, I'm going to turn on them because they're going to give their God credit. That's what we were talking about this morning. It don't matter what field you're in, you better give God the appropriate credit. Ask Herod, who burst right. open in the worms. That's right. Yeah.